I'm JC. I'm a street photographer based in New York City. I go by JC Kodaks on Instagram. Although my name says Kodaks there, I don't shoot film. I don't use Kodaks. I think it's a tribute to my culture uh, way back in the Philippines. So when we have family gatherings on the holidays, the grown-ups would gather us to take photos and they would say, hey Kodak, Kodak time, Kodak. So that name kind of stuck and I took it on as an alias on Instagram. I had my first camera pre-pandemic actually in 2020. I had a friend who did street photography initially. Whatever he captured in the streets, they were beautiful. I was quite impressed of how he's able to capture things from something as mundane as someone walking down the streets of New York City. I thought that was quite impressive. He had a spare camera, so I asked him, hey man, can you give me a friendship discount on your camera? I'd love to try it. So he sold me his uh, um, old Nikon camera, it's just like a starter kit. So I got it for very cheap. As soon as I got the camera, I went straight out the door, tried to take photos, not knowing that you need an SD card. <laughs> so I didn't have an SD card and I had no idea about camera settings. I was in automatic picture mode, taking photos of whatever I thought was aesthetic. I, I really wanted to make it more simpler for myself because I really wanted to learn. So I felt to doing black and white instead. I think as time grew on, I just grew to love it. So keeping the composition so as simple as black and white, I think it was beneficial for me because I use it as a starting point to just pursue street photography. Shoot from the hip mostly. Yeah. Now because I'm scared of conflict. <laughs> I think most of them. <laughs> I've had one chase me one time really? in Times Square during a winter storm. I shot him from so far. I posted it on my Instagram, actually. This guy saw me take his photo from two blocks away. I shouted two blocks away. Like, he said, Hey, why are you taking my photo? Uh, and then I just turned around, walked really fast to the police station in Times Square, kept following me behind me. Kept saying, hey, hey. Like, Oh, no, I'm not, I ain't dealing with you, dude. <laughs> I walked to the police station and finally left. I tried to dabble in color, but I felt like when every time I do color, I would still, you know, saturate the hell out of every colors. And it would always be like silhouette, lots of negative space. And when I look at it, this still looks like a black and white photo. So I just stuck with black and white. I felt like I, if I want to be good at one thing, might as well just be black and white. I gravitated towards the work of Fan Hall because a lot of more modern photographers do reference their material to Fan Hall. Ray Metzger was great. Trent Park also has amazing use of light and shadow. My biggest idol would be Alexei Titorenko. I think he's a Russian-based photographer who used motion and slow shutter speed on his photos. He would capture like shadows of wispy ghosts going around the city. So I always try to emulate that on my, my newer photos. But more so, I look at the works of more contemporary creators like Alan Schaller. You have Phil Penman, really known in you know in the tri-state area, I guess. And Mark Fernley in the UK. And they do adopt like the old style to the new. And I'd really like to also try that on uh, in my work. People say the color doesn't matter if you do black and white. It does. In color, for example, if someone has a striped umbrella, yellow and blue, you can shift that yellow and blue so that the entire umbrella is a uniform in color. I still shoot in color on my camera and just do post-processing on Lightroom. But mentally, when you see the image that you want to take, you know what to expect. And right now, I see mostly everything in black and white anyway. Got that light on. Oh, where's the light? Where's the light at, bro? Excuse me, officer. Is it okay if I take your photo by the light? You look really cool. There's good, dude. There you go. Ready? Appreciate it, man. Thank you. How often would you say, like, you try to take pictures, like, can't, like, you know? Candidly. Post. Post people? Yeah. That's very rare. Yeah. It's extremely rare. Um, it also depends on the, the subject, right? Most of the subjects I want to take photos of don't want to have their photos taken of. Yeah. So that's really tough. That guy was really nice. Yeah. Thanks, bro. <laughs> Bump me. <laughs>
You're good? <laughs> Shove me right there. <laughs> don't move, don't move. Okay. Don't move. <laughs> ah, they're gonna be pissed off. <laughs> I'm gonna piss off a few people. Sorry, 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 sorry. Natural birds. Beautiful. Oh! Oh, I missed that. Yeah, so I have a 9 to 5. I work remotely, but since it's 9 to 5, it's really hard to find time to go out, especially if I'm looking for light most of the time. I'm very much busy during the entire week, so I only have the weekends. And on Saturdays, if I have the chance, I would go out. I would say in a month, I would go out probably two or three times only. In the beginning, when I wanted to pursue street photography, it was just to hang out with friends also. I wanted to hang out with people with shared interests. I thought it would be a good way to engage with them, to walk around, hang out, also to have a routine right now it drives me throughout the week because because I know at the end of the week I get to take photos now I just enjoy it I think the goal is um, to be able to do this as a routine until my legs give out you know hopefully by the time uh, I'm like old I'll still be you know taking my camera out for a walk even after probably I'm, I'm in the wheelchair I'll probably still sh be shooting I'm looking for a subject that crosses the angle of shadows but a couple of people in the foreground so I can have some negative space in the front. It's hard to get the perfect combination. You really have to sit here and wait. That was good. Yeah, I never also look at the eyes of my subject. I never make eye contact. And then if they see me and I have eye contact, I'll yawn. Like, like pretending I have no interest in them. Usually works. Aperture priority right now. During long exposures, I do manual. Light switch though. Like on a sunny day, aperture priority is fine. I used to be a gearhead. Um, I moved from Nikon to Fuji and now to Sony and Ricoh. So I, at the time I was really into gear, but then every other upgrade that I did, my fo photo remained the same. So it wasn't really about the gear, but I was fortunate enough to have my dad who also does photography. He gave me an A7R2. Then he also gave me his A7R3. And so now I'm primarily shooting Sony and Ricoh, Ricoh GR3 Street Edition. I've had this for probably five months in terms of my lens, shoot 35, 2.8. It's fell down the steps of the subway and each bounce like was like a stab in your heart. But I tend to switch from 35 to my 20 mil. I have a 20 mil on my bag and also 85. I think I've exhausted all the possible shadow areas in New York City. And it, if you rely so much on, on just perfect light, the days that there, it's overcast, the days that are raining, the days that are snowing, what do you do? So I had to diversify my work and you, of course you study the work of others you study the work of the greats and i find a lot of interest in shooting snow you can create a lot of great contrast with snow because everything is white i did night photography too which was at the time was scary for me because there's no freaking light anywhere you know have to rely on like the light of the buildings car lights car headlights but then i grew to enjoy them i would not rely on harsh light anymore i can go out at night probably at the, the only time i wouldn't go out to shoot is overcast probably but i'm still learning this guy's good. <laughs> he avoided. Just went out of frame. <laughs> Chances someone walks there. <laughs> Give it 30 seconds. Please. Uh, I guess that works. <laughs> <That's cool. laughs> Okay, you got it. Yeah, no plastic bag. 
Like I think most photographers would go out like profoundly optimistic, you know, every day because they know at the end of the day they'll get one photo. And it's tough when you don't get that at the end of the day. But for me, it was exciting nonetheless, just being out there. And I think if you go through your archives after a month or so, you'll find some good stuff there. Nice. At first, I, t I saw the smokestack. I didn't know the Empire State was in the background. Yeah. That was perfect. Ow! Ow! <laughs> Ow, my knee. Oh, my back. Uh, uh. All right. Ah, uh, we're good, we're good. My back is giving up. <laughs> huh. One of my favorite photos was shot in 2020 during the awesome winter storm that we've had. I call this whiteout. It was around 10 p.m. There was no one around. Uh, I was in 6th Avenue along Radio City building. So I was waiting for someone to just cross the street, but there was no traffic, no one around. So I stuck there for about 30 to one, 30 minutes to an hour, just waiting for someone to cross the street. And I was lucky enough, someone in the police attire crossed the street at the time while the snow was going down heavily. And there was, the all the traffic was like behind him. You can see that it's lit up by the radio city behind him. What I like about the photo is you, there's like tire tracks on the snow that curves and goes around towards the, the subject, which functions like a leading line. I've entered this in a few competitions. It's gained some recognition a bit. So I'm very proud of this photo. Another photo that I love is a slow shutter photo on Fifth Avenue. This was during rush hour and I saw this well-dressed person, well-dressed man on the corner. He was wearing a hat. He was just staring out in space. I don't know what he was thinking, but I didn't have a tripod and I didn't have an ND lens. So I just handheld my camera at F22 and hoped for the best with steady hands. Glad that he stayed there long enough still so that he's a bit sharp here in the image and around him in the foreground are the wispy people walking around him. And I thought that this, this is like a type of photo that's hard to replicate. I took multiple shots, but the first two were blurry because my hand was shaking. I was too excited. I was too excited. So I had to grip the, the strap of my camera real tight against my torso, you know, so it's doesn't move. It was 0.6. At f22, it was still super overexposed because I didn't have an ND filter. So I had to bring the, the highlights really down on post-processing in Lightroom. So first of all, I call this the watcher. This is two photos in two different days. The first photo on the back is uh, during rainy evening. I think this was Madison Avenue with the smokestack uh, on the back. So I took this separately and inlaid it with a person with a hat. At the time you can see it was very evident, it was pandemic time. He was wearing a mask there. I saw that the parking sign arrow and a uh, street light on the right hand side aligned perfectly with this other photo so i thought that it would be fitting to put the image together to make it look like the eyes the arrow of the park points to the subject which was a weird coincidence at the time because i was just using it for as eyes but i realized hey it's pointing the freaking yeah. sign on the, the subject mm -hmm. 